In this video, we're going to view the basic umpire uniform for working youth baseball, either behind the plate or on the bases. We'll also discuss how to properly wear your uniform and some key tips to keep in mind when you're making your purchasing decisions online. Also, stay tuned to the end where I'll give you three small additions to your uniform that will make a big difference in elevating your uniform appearance above other umpires. Let's get started. Hi, Patrick Farber here from Umpire Classroom and Georgia High School Baseball Umpire Development, here to help you develop your skills as an umpire of amateur baseball. If you find this video helpful, please leave a comment with more video ideas that you'd like to see. And as always, you can find additional resources in the description box below. You'll also see a link to have our weekly rules quiz emailed directly to you in that video description. So we all know the stereotype of a youth baseball umpire wearing the hat backwards, shin guards outside the pants, and obviously we know it's a terrible look, looks very unprofessional, and just sets a bad tone for the game. But on the other end of that, even working a youth baseball game by showing up in a clean and polished look, an umpire crew can set a tone of professionalism and control going into that game. So first, let's talk about the uniform for an umpire working the bases. This would include things such as a hat, a shirt, pants, belt, socks, and shoes. For the hat, most often you'll wear one associated with the game or league you're working for. For our GHSA umpires, when they're working a GHSA baseball game, they'll be required to wear a hat with the GHSA logo on it. Now generally hats come in two different colors. They come in dark blue or black. The important thing here is that when you're wearing a black shirt, you wear a black hat, and when you're wearing a dark blue shirt, you wear a dark blue hat. With a shirt like this that's light blue with the black piping on the side, most likely you want to wear a black hat with that. The last factor when looking at hats is whether you want to go with a six stitch or four stitch hat. For those of you that don't know what that means, a six stitch hat is going to have a longer bill than a four stitch hat, and most hats you casually wear tend to be eight stitches. On the bases, you should almost always be wearing a six stitch hat. Behind the plate, you have the option of choosing between the four or six, but for most umpires in professional baseball, they still wear the six stitch hat and they've learned how to properly take off their mask and do so without removing the bill of their hat. Personally, I prefer to go with a six stitch hat. I think it's a better look and it's also one less expense that I don't have to make out of pocket. And with just a little bit of practice, you too can remove your mask without taking off a six stitch hat. Next, let's talk about shirts. Shirts share a lot of similarities to hats in how they're determined what you get to wear for a game. Just like hats, shirts are usually required to be either a certain design or color by your association, and sometimes they even include the association logo. For example, our GHSA umpires are required when working a GHSA game to wear a shirt with a GHSA logo, and those shirts are gonna be either the old school navy blue or the old school light blue. But regardless of the uniform color, you should always wear an undershirt that is either black or dark gray. And one thing to keep in mind when purchasing shirts is that they're actually sized for wearing behind the plate, meaning that they're sized to have plate gear between them and your body, making them a big cut. So usually, rule of thumb is that when working the bases, you'll wanna go down a size from your regular t-shirt size so that you get a good fit when on the bases. For this reason, you see a lot of umpires have two different shirts, one for the plate and one for the bases, so that both of them have a good looking fit. Next, let's talk about pants. Generally, there are three options you can pick from when choosing out pants. They are sold as either a plate cut, a base cut, or combo pants. So the plate pants have extra room and extra fabric so that you can wear shin guards and squat behind the plate. And the base cut are gonna have a narrower cut and be more similar to golf pants. If money is tight, you can totally get away with getting just the combo pants, but my suggestion to you is make the investment and just get one set of base pants and one set of plate pants. You should also know that pants are sold only by waist size, so you're gonna need to get them hemmed regardless. Also, they're sold in various colors, but for working baseball games, you should only be wearing charcoal pants. Now let's quickly talk about belts. Don't wear a dress belt that you already have in your closet. You should wear a black leather belt that is either an inch and a half or an inch and three quarters with a silver belt buckle. Finally, shoes. For a base umpire, you can get away with just about any athletic looking shoe. Just know they should be either entirely black or black with white accents. Most umpires tend to wear turfs or rubber nub shoes, and you can go with either a low cut or a mid cut. Just make sure you're not wearing any cleats when out on the field. 
And while you're at the shoe store, go ahead and pick up a black pair of crew socks while you're at it. This will help ensure a professional look and keep your ankles from showing while you're running around on the bases. Great, so let's move on to the plate umpire. To start, you'll keep all the basics that you had as a base umpire, but again, remember, you'll want to go with plate pants and probably a larger size shirt. Now, on top of this, you'll also want to wear plate shoes. Plate shoes are specifically designed for going behind the plate, and they include extra padding to help keep you protected, which is extremely important as you get to higher levels of baseball with faster pitching. Now, let's go behind the specific plate gear you'll need to stay safe. First and foremost, you're going to need either a mask or helmet. The difference between the two is that the mask only covers the front of the face, while the helmet covers the entire head. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that a helmet is actually going to be safer than a mask. A mask is designed so that when it gets impacted by a baseball, it should actually go flying off of your head, removing that impact entirely, whereas a helmet is going to stay on your head and keep that impact there. I personally wear a mask behind the plate, and most umpires I know tend to as well. Now, what's important is that when wearing a helmet, you actually have the option to not wear a hat or wear a hat, but with a mask, you must wear a hat underneath it and always, always have the bill facing forwards. It may take a little bit of practice to get used to taking the mask off without taking your hat off as well at the same time. But as I said earlier in the video, with just a little bit of practice, you'll be able to get it down fairly quickly. Now, you should know that the masks do come in various colors and padding styles. Feel free to pick whatever you like, just obviously don't go with pink year round. Just know that for optimal performance, the manufacturers usually suggest that you replace the mask padding about every year, which you can do online buying replacement pads directly from them. Also, you can purchase throat guards that can be attached to your mask. I see most umpires doing this currently. Just know that proper attachment of a throat guard is actually higher up on the mask, closer to the chin, and not just at the very bottom of the mask. Moving down, the next piece of equipment is the chest protector. My suggestion to you is to try on a couple chest protectors of other umpires that you know and make a decision which one you like the best behind the plate. Personally, I've worn the champion body armor behind the plate all the way up to the professional level and it tends to be one of the cheapest options. So just know when picking out chest protectors, really look for the best fit. Price doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna be a safer option. The biggest factor to ensuring your safety when wearing a chest protector is making sure that you have it tight and snug to the body and pulled all the way up so that it's covering your collarbone. Often when I see umpires getting injured, it's because their chest protector is not tight enough and when they bend over, it hangs down, leaving their throat and neck area exposed. Okay, so moving down, let's talk about what might be the most important piece of equipment for male umpires your cup. Personally, I wear the Diamond MMA cup, but you can get just about any brand that you see online. There's a lot of great options out there. Just pick one that's comfortable for you and that you can adjust to so that you can still run on the field while keeping that cup in. And for female umpires, there is a pelvic protector as well that you can get. And most female umpires that I know do wear one when they go behind the plate themselves. Finally, for protective gear, you should also wear shin guards. There's a lot of options out there. Just make sure you're getting a pair that do cover all the way up to above the knee. We don't want to wear soccer shin guards that leave that exposed. And know that when you're wearing them, you're going to wear them inside of your pants, not on the outside. And when you go to get your plate pants hemmed, it's not a bad idea to actually wear your pants to that hemming so that you get them hemmed at the proper distance so that when you go down in your crouch, your pant legs don't come all the way up. So on top of the safety gear, let's talk about the other tools you'll need for working the plate. First, ball bags. These are important because keeping balls on you at all times will help you keep the pace of the game moving. You can wear one or two. If you're wearing one, make sure you wear it on the side of your dominant hand so that you can pull the ball out quicker and throw it back to the pitcher. Personally, I wear two, but it's up to you, personal preference, what you think looks best for you behind the plate. Ball bags are sold in two different colors, either dark blue or black, and generally you should wear one that matches the same color as your hat. Next, you need to have your indicator for keeping track of balls and strikes. Indicators tend to be sold in two options, either plastic or metal. I prefer to use the metal, but again, your choice what you want to use. Indicators are sold with either three or four dials on them. Either is fine. The fourth option is usually innings, but you don't necessarily need that to work most baseball. I personally use the all-star metal die cast indicator. 
I like this one because it's got metal indentations on the dials so that I actually know what the count is without looking at it. But regardless of what you pick, just always know you're gonna hold your indicator in your left hand at all times. The reason being, if you go to change your indicator while it's in your right hand while calling balls and strikes, it'll look like you're starting to come up and call a strike when instead you're just coming up to change it. So that's why we always keep our indicator in our left hand. Additionally to an indicator, a plate umpire should also carry a brush. Pretty self-explanatory. You're gonna use it for just wiping off the plate. Uh, one small thing to keep in mind though, when you are wiping off the plate, make sure you face the crowd from fair territory and let your butt face the pitcher. You'd rather show a tear in the pants to him than to the entire grandstands right behind you. Finally, the last tool you'll need when working the plate is a pin and possibly a lineup card holder. Most instructors will encourage you to carry at least two different colored pins. That way, regardless of what color the coach writes his lineup in, you'll have a different color so that your edit stand out on the lineup card. So with this, you've got the basic look down for working a baseball game, but I wanna share with you three easy tips to help elevate your appearance above that of the average umpire. The first item that I think every sports official should have is shirt stays. It goes without saying that we should always have our shirts tucked in when on the field, and shirt stays are a great way to ensure that your shirt does stay tucked while also helping you to have a more athletic appearance on the field. You'll be hard pressed to find any umpires in professional baseball not wearing shirt stays. And I personally wear the neat tucks, which I like to use across baseball, basketball, and football. Second tip I have for you is always clean your shoes. You'd be amazed at how many umpires don't do this, but it makes a huge difference in your appearance from game to game. All you need is a brush, water, and some kind of cleaning solution that's safe for the material your shoes are made out of. Look, many umpires have their own preference that they're gonna swear by as the best way to clean their shoes. You'd be amazed how many you hear the longer you're around the game. Just know that just about anything will work. The biggest thing is that you just put in the little bit of effort and time to make sure you're cleaning your shoes. Finally, my third tip to you is to always hang your shirts and pants. Don't crumple them up. Try not to fold them if you can. Keeping them hung will help keep the creases in them, keep them looking sharp, keep the wrinkles out. Again, just another small tip to elevate your appearance over that of other umpires. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a like and be sure to share it with other umpires. Again, you can find links to everything mentioned in the video in the description below. And you can also find a link to our weekly rules quiz down there as well. Thanks everyone. Look forward to seeing you on the field.